Imagine putting in hours at the gym, lifting weights and pushing your limits only to see your muscle gains hit a wall. This frustrating plateau is a common struggle for many fitness enthusiasts. Despite your consistent effort, your muscles just aren't growing the way you expected. In today's video, we're diving deep into the science behind muscle growth plateaus and uncovering the key reasons why your progress has stalled. Beyond the basics, like ensuring adequate rest or not eating enough, will reveal the hidden factors that might be sabotaging your gains. Each of these reasons is backed by rigorous research and understanding them can transform your approach to training. Stay tuned as we break down each reason with practical solutions, empowering you to overcome these obstacles and continue building muscle effectively. Lack of progressive overload. Progressive overload is the principle of gradually increasing the stress placed on your muscles during training. Simply put, to continue getting bigger, you must make your workouts harder. This can be achieved by lifting heavier weights, increasing the number of repetitions, or enhancing the intensity of your workouts. Your body adapts to any stimulus relatively quickly, so if you don't progressively overload your muscles, your gains will likely stagnate. The importance of progressive overload is well supported by scientific research. For instance, studies have shown a strong correlation between increased training load and muscle hypertrophy. A 2000 study involving Olympic weightlifters suggested that muscle strength reaches absolute limits at certain heights, 183 centimeters for men and 175 centimeters for women, and that heavier lifters have a greater proportion of non-contractile tissue, affecting their strength to body mass ratio. This indicates that as athletes increase their training loads, their muscle mass and strength also increase significantly. So how can you implement progressive overload in your workouts? One effective method is to gradually increase the weight you lift. For example, if you're comfortable bench pressing 100 kilograms for eight reps, try increasing it to 105 kilograms in your next session. Another approach is to add more sets or repetitions. A 2022 study compared the effects of increasing load with constant repetitions and increasing repetitions with constant load. If you're doing three sets of 10 reps, push yourself to do four sets of 10 reps or three sets of 12 reps. The study found that both methods are viable for enhancing muscular adaptations, with slight differences favoring repetitions for muscle growth and load for strength, but no significant differences overall. Not enough training volume. Training volume refers to the total amount of work you perform in your workouts, usually measured by the number of sets and repetitions. It's a key driver of muscle hypertrophy as it determines the overall stimulus your muscles receive, prompting them to grow in response. For beginners, the minimum effective volume is relatively low as their muscles respond quickly to new stimuli. However, as you become more advanced, your muscles adapt and you'll need to increase your training volume to continue making gains. Advanced lifters often require more sets per muscle group to achieve the same level of growth they experienced in their early training days. The link between training volume and muscle growth is well documented. A 2019 study evaluated muscular adaptations in resistance trained men using low, moderate and high volume resistance training protocols. It found that strength and endurance improved similarly across all groups while muscle hypertrophy showed a dose response relationship with higher training volumes resulting in greater muscle growth. A more recent 2022 meta-analysis compared muscle hypertrophy and strength gains across various resistance training loads with matched volume loads. The findings indicate that higher loads result in greater strength gains, while hypertrophic adaptations are similar regardless of load magnitude, provided the volume load is equal. The differing results can be attributed to the first study focusing on volume differences and their impact on hypertrophy, whereas the second study emphasized load intensity with matched volumes. However, it's essential to strike a balance. While increasing training volume can boost muscle growth, too much volume can lead to overtraining and hinder your progress. If you're not recovering well between workouts, you might start overreaching, which can ultimately set you back. To avoid this, gradually increase your training volume. For instance, if you're currently doing 10 sets per muscle group per week and not seeing progress, try adding a couple more sets and monitor how your body responds. Not enough rest between sets. Rest periods between sets are crucial for muscle recovery and growth. When you don't give your muscles enough time to recover between sets, you compromise their ability to perform at their best in subsequent sets. This incomplete recovery can lead to reduced performance, which means you won't be able to lift as heavy or for as many reps, ultimately hindering your muscle growth. Research has shown that longer rest periods can significantly benefit muscle hypertrophy. 
For instance, a notable 2016 study found that participants who rested for three minutes between sets experienced more muscle growth than those who rested for only one minute. A further 2016 study compared the effects of one minute versus five minute rest intervals between sets on the muscle anabolic response to resistance exercise. It found that while short rest periods resulted in higher circulating hormones, they blunted the acute muscle anabolic response compared to longer rest periods, suggesting that longer rest intervals may better support muscle hypertrophy by enhancing myofibrillar protein synthesis. Even more recent studies have highlighted the importance of allowing your muscles adequate time to recover between sets to maximize growth. So, how long should you rest between sets? It depends on your training goals and the intensity of your workout. For heavy compound lifts like squats and deadlifts, a rest period of 3 to 5 minutes is ideal. This allows your muscles to recover sufficiently so you can lift heavier weights and create more mechanical tension, which is crucial for muscle growth. For lighter exercises or isolation movements, 1 to 2 minutes of rest may be sufficient. Cardio Overload While cardio is essential for overall fitness, excessive cardio can hinder muscle growth. Too much cardiovascular exercise depletes glycogen stores and increases muscle breakdown, which interferes with muscle building. Balancing cardio and resistance training is crucial to ensure they complement rather than counteract each other. Excessive cardio hampers muscle growth by impacting mTOR, mammalian target of rapamycin, activity, which is crucial for muscle hypertrophy. mTOR is activated by leucine-rich food intake and resistance training, while AMPK, which promotes catabolism, is activated by low-calorie intake and aerobic exercise. These pathways are antagonistic. When AMPK is activated, it can inhibit mTOR, thereby reducing hypertrophy. For example, a 2012 meta-analysis found that adding cardio to a resistance training routine reduced muscle growth effect size by 31% and strength gains by 18%. Additionally, running had a more detrimental effect than cycling, and higher frequency and longer duration of endurance training led to greater reductions in these gains. However, some studies suggest that cardio might not be entirely detrimental. For instance, a 2014 study found that while aerobic exercise alone reduced muscle glycogen and activated certain muscle proteins, combining aerobic and resistance training improved muscle size and endurance, though strength gains were higher with resistance training alone. Additionally, a 2022 meta-analysis found that concurrent training does not compromise muscle hypertrophy and maximal strength development, but may attenuate explosive strength gains, especially when aerobic and strength exercises are performed in the same session. To integrate cardio without hindering muscle growth, schedule cardio sessions on non-lifting days or at least several hours before or after strength training. Aim for moderate intensity cardio sessions lasting no more than 30, 45 minutes to avoid excessive glycogen depletion and minimize muscle breakdown. Alternatively, incorporating high intensity interval training, HIT, which is shorter and more intense, can help preserve muscle mass while still providing cardiovascular benefits. Poor hydration. Hydration plays a critical role in muscle function and recovery, yet it's often overlooked in the quest for muscle growth. Proper hydration helps maintain fluid balance within cells, facilitates nutrient transport, and supports metabolic processes essential for muscle repair and growth. When you're dehydrated, your body struggles to perform these functions efficiently, leading to impaired performance and slower muscle growth. Dehydration can significantly disrupt your workouts and recovery. When your body loses more than 2% of its water content, it starts to affect exercise performance and muscle function due to osmotic stress. Osmotic stress occurs when there's a sudden change in the solute concentration around a cell, causing physiological dysfunction. During exercise and heat stress, skeletal muscle fibers experience multiple fluid shifts, both inside and outside the cells. Dehydration decreases blood flow to the muscles, increasing the risk of ischemia-related damage. At the cellular level, active muscle cells undergo rapid changes in volume, swelling and then shrinking, which signals the production of reactive oxygen species, ROS. Furthermore, when dehydration coincides with repeated eccentric muscle contractions, it can amplify muscle damage and prolong recovery times. Scientific studies have highlighted the importance of staying hydrated for muscle hypertrophy. A 2022 meta-analysis found that dehydration makes exercise feel harder, particularly when body weight drops by at least 3%. Additionally, a cross-sectional study in older adults revealed that dehydration was linked to muscle catabolism. 
However, a 2023 systematic review found that pre-exercise hyperhydration can improve exercise capacity by reducing heart rate and core temperature through increased plasma volume, though gastrointestinal symptoms were common and varied with the ingestion protocol. So how can you ensure you're staying properly hydrated? Start by drinking water consistently throughout the day, not just during your workouts. The Institute of Medicine recommends that women consume roughly 2.7 liters of fluid per day and men consume about 3.7 liters per day. Additionally, consider consuming electrolyte rich beverages if you engage in intense or prolonged exercise sessions as they help replenish essential minerals lost through sweat. Lack of training frequency. Training frequency refers to how often you work each muscle group per week. It is vital for maintaining muscle protein synthesis and ensuring continuous muscle growth. Training a muscle group only once a week misses opportunities to stimulate muscle protein synthesis throughout the week, leading to suboptimal growth. Training each muscle group only once per week has several drawbacks. Muscle protein synthesis typically returns to baseline within 48 hours after resistance training. This means if you train a muscle group only once a week, it spends most of the week in a non-anabolic state, limiting growth potential. Studies show that muscle protein synthesis increases significantly after heavy resistance training, peaking at 109% above baseline at 24 hours post-exercise, but nearly returning to baseline by 36 hours. Moreover, infrequent training results in less frequent neuromuscular adaptation, which is crucial for strength gains and muscle development. Scientific studies highlight the benefits of higher training frequencies. A 2016 meta-analysis revealed that training a muscle group at least twice per week is more effective for muscle hypertrophy than training at once per week. The analysis indicated that higher frequencies are associated with greater hypertrophic effects, suggesting major muscle groups should be trained at least twice weekly for optimal growth. A 2018 study comparing training muscle groups once versus five times per week in well-trained men found that while both groups saw similar strength gains, training five times a week resulted in significantly greater muscle thickness increases, suggesting a superior hypertrophic effect. However, some recent studies have shown no significant differences in muscle growth between higher and lower frequencies, when total training volume was the same, suggesting individuals can base their frequency on personal preference without affecting hypertrophic outcomes. For optimal muscle growth, training frequency should align with your fitness level. Beginners might benefit from training each muscle group two to three times per week with full body workouts or upper lower splits. Intermediate and advanced lifters can consider training each muscle group three to four times per week using more specialized splits to allow adequate recovery while maximizing muscle protein synthesis. To avoid overtraining, manage volume and intensity. Start by distributing your current weekly volume over more days without increasing the total volume immediately. Monitor your recovery and adjust as needed. Incorporate different exercises and vary the load to manage fatigue while ensuring consistent progress. We've covered some crucial factors that could be stalling your muscle growth, but remember this isn't an exhaustive list. Other factors like not using a full range of motion, lack of sleep, not eating enough protein and excessive alcohol intake can also hinder your progress. We'll dive into these and more tips to maximize your muscle growth and overall fitness in future videos. In the meantime, be sure to check out these two essential videos right here, packed with insights that can help you fine tune your routine and maximize your results. Until next time, keep training smart and I'll catch you in the next one.